Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey Man at YouTube with a, another video or the second edition to the unorthodox modification of a master grade build. Tell the truth, I don't build a lot of master grades, don't want to head down the uh, regular road and build it more as a static traditional build and detail the hell out of it. The build was out of the box and super glued together last week. This week I have uh, detailed it and later on in the series the second model and diorama will be introduced. Uh, this uh, model is a technique I like to call the clusterfuck where you just add as tiny and as many bits of tiny little detail across the entire surface. Such builds have uh, appeared in Bandai World Cup um, competitions in a few countries and won and gone very well. It is a lovely uh, concept. And the secondary model I've uh, decided is going to be somewhere between diesel and steampunk. Lots of uh, rivets, uh, a zimmer coating on a dome, a couple of um, smokestacks or cogs or whatnot that's been recommended on a snow field. So for today, let's look what I've done during the week. First, I want to cover these uh, Builder Parts HD Gunpla sets. A lot more expensive than the other counterparts. Uh, but these pieces are a bit big and you get two styrene runners. Instructions in the center bit of uh, the cardboard. The uh, Xeon Federation Federation Zion was uh, very attractive to me. I uh, bought immediately and using a Federation shield across, across the chest. Uh, these MS panels, not too bad. They by themselves are extremely lame and kind of a bit too large for uh, high grade and more modern kits, maybe for older master grades which are okay. By themselves, very ugly. Mix it together with other modification um, bits and pieces and koto parts and wave parts can be interesting. Again, I'm still skeptical and not a huge fan on the uh, Bandai range, but uh, these new ones have uh, redeemed themselves a little bit. Now here is uh, the build. A little more detailed than we saw it last week. Uh, quite a uh, bit of bits and pieces across the uh, chest. The shield and top uh, shoulder runs might look a bit rough. Uh, they've been putty down because the uh, gaps were a bit uh, out there and will look like a single piece later on. Uh, the body a bit decorated and there's going to be extra styrene and wire wrapped around so it would be a bit more blended and uniformed in, not so strange and uh, bulky looking but slowly I'm just getting detail that uh, looks like it'll fit in some places and just uh, gluing it around in some nice areas right behind the leg is some nice internals in between the legs but you get the idea uh, what the goal is when I'm detailing these things is, as you know, I've uh, got the bit box with uh, a ton of these Rigo Zeta parts. I would, uh, let's say, select this piece and think of glue on a really nice surface. It's got interesting details, circular pieces, panel lines, raised bits. It's like pla plate, but just a lot more interesting looking. Though at the back, it's designed that it's uh, got a peg and butt joint and it's meant to glue with each other, not sit down flush. So with um, very old uh, debunked nippers that I don't use for cutting runners anymore, I would uh, trim these little pegs and then grind the flat head against a um, sanding stick, like so, a high grit one until it's reasonably flat and uh, glues on. Sometimes the piece would be a little too big for the surface it's sitting on and needs a bit of trimming. So a lot of pieces here 
might not necessarily be its original size on the uh, runner example the blue one on the side of the uh, torso that had a bit of a uh, trimming to make it fit there as well as the piece on the cannon it may still seem a bit alien the concept of uh, borrowing parts from another kit and gluing it on randomly to make something that's completely different but later on the build when this uh, fleshes out and looks a bit uh, different uh, some sort of uh, paint thrown on it, weathered, ink at that stage it'll make a lot more sense and there'll be more information throughout the series where that sort of concept or idea can be copied and carried on to other models. Now obviously buying a real grade, chopping it up and gluing it on a model is uh, not ideal. I uh, got this uh, kit for free but if you were to do something similar at home right off the bat some people have a uh, wealth of uh, spare parts or a bits box that's full of things I haven't used over many kits but if you do not have a bits box 70 second um, tank and self propel gun model kits around the $10 mark, sometimes uh, the $15 mark can have a lot more finer pieces is an excellent start and you'll definitely be rewarded between 50 to 100 you know riveted or small shockers or uh, what not that is always a good start and uh, decorating a model with nice pieces like that is always a good way of doing your own flair and build a bit of trivia and you'll find this very interesting the set builders for the Star Wars films are uh, fans of military models, models who has uh, studied the uh, Millennium Falcon, uh, the big oval shaped uh, ship, has recognized parts of um, German armor, uh, the Panzer II uh, exhaust or whatever, and other very strange um, model kit parts modified and spread across it to look like different detail and it, it's quite funny to them though to most of us it is uh, a space uh, ship so in the study of this if you are stealing parts from another kit uh, do a little modification and uh, chop and change as gluing like a fuel can on a Gundam that's meant to be 35th scale can look a bit weird but something that's not as recognizable is absolutely perfect uh, again these concepts will be explored further and I'll take the backpack to have a good look at the back and we'll have another look at this next week where more detail is applied Face definitely does not look like an RX-78 anymore. Catch you guys later.